The first time we met with the head of Islamic Relief, he carried a briefcase full of tax returns, ready to answer questions about where Islamic Relief's money goes. Because of their name, they're constantly having to prove that they aren't funding terrorism, which they're not. They provide international humanitarian relief. They're an NGO like the Red Cross. We said, don't open the briefcase. We're wondering if your charity shop would like to collaborate on an art project. In America, we have thrift stores, mostly Christian ones like Goodwill or the Salvation Army. And in the UK, there are charity shops, kind of an insane amount of them. One for every cause and illness and religion, and I love them. So when Art Angel invited me to do a project in London for 2017, I proposed that we invite Christian, Jewish, Buddhist, and Muslim charity shops to work together and make an interfaith shop. Okay, this, this is my style guide. Initially, when all the charities were asked to collect goods for the interfaith shop, um, there was the question of what should they choose for the store. You, you had to limit it somehow. There had to be some limitations. So, for example, very classic shoes, yes. Shoes with jewels, yes. Extreme boots, yes. Nurses' shoes, yes. But no other kinds of shoes. So that rolls out a lot. Um, maternity pants with extra panels, yes, obviously. Objects that could be but aren't sculptural or abstract sculptures, but they, they could be, you know, like these um, thigh exerciser things that look kind of interesting and sculptural. Um, only books written by women. That's an important thing. Early on, I said, avoid brands like this, Atmosphere. No, you know, we have tons of Atmosphere. We carry so much of that stuff. Atmosphere, Zara, River Island, Topshop, h &M. As it turned out, it wasn't the stuff in the store that made it art. It was a feeling. And the feeling grew as all the elements came together. Once the charities were on board, we hired a shop manager, Diana Gognomo, to handle payroll, scheduling, staffing, and stock, which we started gathering in an office building in Acton. Like this. Is anyone gonna buy that? No, but so many people are gonna stand and think about it for quite a while. Tron, Tron time? Is that a thing from here? Trondheim? No. A lot of stuff is just mysterious in life. It was important to recreate all the details of the charity shop vernacular. So we're gonna have one mirror that'll be like a store-bought mirror with a frame skinnier than this. We'll have a bench, maybe, built-in bench and then a sliding cloth curtain that you shut with, and that's it. We were building a real store from the ground up, and I hoped the public would immediately recognize it and know exactly what to do there. We chose fixtures and mannequins, racks and flooring, fluorescent lights, a cash register, and then we opened the store inside another store, a luxury department store. Our interfaith charity shop was on the third floor of Selfridges on Oxford Street. Needless to say, there were many, many negotiations with Selfridges leading up to this point. Some of them were about the nuances of faith, some were about the department store's very strict building and safety codes. August 31st, 2017 was our first day of business. The store was called Art Angel and Miranda July present Norwood Jewish Charity Shop, London Buddhist Center Charity Shop, and Spitalfields Crypt Trust Charity Shop in solidarity with Islamic Relief Charity Shop at Selfridges. It was kind of a long name. 
Our neighbors were all high-end designers, but our brand was strong. We had the logo, the baskets, the aprons, and this idea of charity, a pillar of every religion. Well, I represent the brand in Estiva, and I sell sunglasses. This floor is the designer floor, and most of the luxury brands are up here. This room in particular is mainly just purely designer clothes. There's not any like high street labels here. And to have a charity shop that has things on sale for a few pounds when the rest of the room is like half my rent for a jacket, it's, it's quite strange. We were represented by Diana and our shop assistants, who each came from their respective charity shops. The hard book to be underneath. Yeah. There were heated conversations about the choice of radio station and tips on how to dress a mannequin modestly. I liked that the bigger questions had to be worked out through the practical business of running a store together and making it prosper since all the profits were divided equally. Because I was going to ask, because obviously, you know, things like the Quran and pictures and all that other stuff, you can't put it on the floor, no. whereas a prayer mat goes directly on the floor. Yes. Essentially, is that not, like, part of no, religious kind of artifacts? with the frame, they've got the Arabic text, which comes from the Quran. So the uh, text is actually sacred to us, and that's why we wouldn't put that on the floor, whereas prayer mats don't have any of the Arabic text. Oh, right, OK. So therefore, it's allowed to go on the floor. <laughs> So what happens in here, in, in the dressing room, which is like my favorite place in the store maybe, because people come in here alone, take off all their clothes. I'm not going to do that right now. But they take off their clothes and put on these other clothes, and they look in this mirror, and then often they call out to, you know, it's like a little bit of a performance. They'll, they'll say, like, Eliza. and. Um, and then Eliza comes in and they like talk about it and talk about their bodies and you know maybe I hear these conversations you know I, I don't eavesdrop but you know um, and and discuss like well this or is this like something I have and what's going on with my stomach and how does my butt look? It's good. Yeah. We pick the better dress. Yeah. I'm often writing books and making movies, so I'm used to creating fictions. And this space was very much a sort of utopic fiction. The store wouldn't have happened without my authorship. And yet, unlike a film set, what happened in the space was real. None of these people were actors. I need a mirror, can I? <laughs> you teach me. Selfridges has a kind of iconic yellow bag, and we copied this, putting our name and logo on it. And on the back, we put a very old Selfridges tagline, open to the world since 1909. So you want to buy this? Yeah, it's, it's Islamic, it's holy words. And, and what does it say? Yeah, it's God's name. Oh, God's name. Of course, we all know these different economies exist, but they thrive on being geographically set apart. This was like putting coach in first class. It made the disparity seem not just unfair, but surreal. Because yes, our shop is a construction, but so is Selfridges, so is class. It's all a construction. It was open for six weeks, and then overnight, it was dismantled, and the third floor at Selfridges was restored, exactly as it had been before. No one would ever guess what had once been there. 